All right, good evening, Sunderland residents. Thanks to those of you who are here for coming in on such a beautiful evening. Um, and um, Did we have a choice to be here or not? <laughs> <laughs> you did. Oh, I think she was talking to those people. Oh, to those people. Oh. <laughs> um, so, um, so this is our annual, CP CPC has to have an annual public forum, and um, um, so this is it. And um, I see this this meeting is having three um, three purposes. One is to hear the results of projects that we funded um, and hear a status where things are at. Um, and that includes um, potentially closing out projects that have a bounce but are completed. Um, second is to share what project leaders have learned along the way um, uh, as a way to make future projects better. And, um, and then discuss pro ideas for future projects, if anybody has any. So um, that's our agenda. Um, I'm Sarah Snyder. I'm currently chair of the CPC. And why don't we all introduce ourselves? Helen Clark, uh, representing the Historical Commission. Mike Westman, representing everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm with Michael. I'm an at-large. I think you are at-large, too. Yeah. yeah, and would you all be willing to introduce yourself? Uh, Glenn Olin with Rural Development. Okay. Bob Ahern, Sunland Firemen's Association. Uh, Scott Bergeron, Janet's husband. <laughs> <laughs> Janet Bergeron, Riverside Cemetery Trustee. Tracy Sacri, um, Sunderland Elementary Playground. Mm. <laughs> All right, thanks, y'all, for coming. Um, okay, so I asked the folks who um, have led projects to come and give a report on them. And, um, uh, and Glenn, I think you're here representing the 120 North Main 120 Street North project. Main. Okay, so would you like to give us a brief Certainly. date on where things stand? Define brief. Somebody told me I could keep it to I an see. hour or less. <laughs> Just um, I do have a written copy, so I will... Um, uh, pass these around. I can also send Sherry a electronic version. I don't know if you guys post this stuff. Oh, that's a good idea. Anywhere, sure. um, but more than happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Lauren. And, um, rather than uh, tell you a story, I'll, uh, I'll just uh, give you the Reader's Digest version. Please. Yeah. The, um, I've got just a couple So the uh, project we've been working on is 120 North Main Street, affordable senior housing. Lauren Starr is here from the 120 North Main Street Committee as well. And uh, the past year has been a pretty busy year. The... Um, Microphone? Oh, okay. She doesn't come to many meetings. <laughs> Do I need to stand up in front of a microphone or no. anything? Or are you catching this? Yes. The, um, You're good on TV, right? Yep. You're on TV. <laughs> if, you, if you want, we have a powder room out storage. <laughs> Perfect. I just went for a bike ride, so I showered after I took the ride. Um, Always good. Yeah. At any rate, um, so 120 North Main Street, we've been working for a couple of years uh, to determine what might be feasible in terms of affordable senior housing on site. Um, I am a neophyte to the project that came on board with rural development uh, just about a year ago, so April of uh, 2017. So, um, you know, I can speak extensively about what we've been doing for the last year. Uh, principally, the uh, project sponsor, Rural Development Inc., uh, put together uh, a development team, which includes uh, folks involved in project development, project management, uh, includes uh, finance experts includes the design team, both the architectural folks as well as folks that will be working on the mechanical electrical plumbing systems uh, and also site. Uh, site's been um, a little bit complicated because of uh, higher levels of groundwater in uh, the back area of the 120 North Main Street parcel, which is just shy of uh, three acres. So. Um, that was kind of the big, the big thing. It always takes a while to make sure you've got the right fit for uh, the development team. Um, RDI went out and uh, worked with one of our uh, partners and secured a pre-development loan 
uh, to make sure that we would have funds to pay all these consultants for their time uh, leading up to um, application for a comprehensive permit and some of the other applications that we're after. Uh, the 120 North Main Street Committee has been meeting on a regular basis. Uh, sometimes it was monthly, sometimes it was in the winter months, it may have gone to every two months, especially with some of the, uh, the weather elements. But we've also been meeting with um, a number of uh, organizations, departments within uh, town, uh, including police, fire, all the first responders. Uh, we've met with um, planning. Uh, and uh, zoning, we did a courtesy meeting in advance of the comprehensive permit. We also met with uh, South County uh, Council on Aging, um, the Energy Committee, uh, we met with some abutters. Um, so we've basically just been trying to make sure that folks are aware of the details of the plan in advance of the uh, comprehensive permit, which um, kind of leads me to an ask we have tonight of you folks, and that's not of money, but the comprehensive uh, permit uh, application is going before the ZBA on June 7th. I just received my notice today, I think, in the mail, so um, you may or may not be getting one as well. Um, this is a 40B project, which means it's a streamlined process for um, permitting and um, we just want to make sure that uh, advocates for affordable housing in Sunderland are um, present at that hearing and let uh, the zoning board uh, know that um, you're in support of the project. You've in fact invested significantly in the project both with the acquisition of the property um, as well as the additional allocation at last year's town meeting of another $100,000. So um, June 7th, 7 p.m., probably in this room, yeah. I would imagine. Um, we'd love to have you there if there's uh, an opportunity for you folks to um, craft a letter. Um, I could certainly provide some, some language for, for that. Um, we've uh, had folks from the Historic District Commission uh, involved. Uh, at, uh, Carl is on the um, 120 North Main Street Committee. We've also gotten um, the go-ahead from the Mass Historical uh, Commission. So um, that's all. Everything is, is moving swimmingly, as it were. So um, I, I can talk a little bit about the program, but I don't want to get into a lot of detail about fit, finish, and that kind of stuff. But what we're talking about are 33 units of affordable senior housing on site three in the existing farmhouse uh, and a new structure at the back of the property, towards the back of the yeah. property, that'll have 30 units. In. And I think we're all, those of us here are all quite familiar with the project. Okay. And I, I mean, so maybe what we should do is is see if there are any questions about the project. Sure. Is a, uh, um, is, would that be okay with you? That's perfect. Okay. Uh, in that note to you is uh, just a timeline for the, uh, basically up until um, the lease up, which we project to be happening sometime in 2021. So um, this, is, this is when things are gonna start getting busy, uh, both in terms of securing the financing, going through the ZBA's process, and um, you know, getting the shovels in the ground, getting the site work done, and, and moving this thing forward. Okay, Lauren. I kind of assumed that what you wanted to know is when they were when they were going to want to spend that hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's there. That's <laughs> <laughs> that. Well, that's one part, and I think we also want to know, like, how is that how is that CPA investment benefiting the project? Is it helping? Or you know, um, and yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead. Well, if I could for one second. I had a meeting earlier this evening with the uh, uh, consultant that we're, we're using with a South County Senior Center, and they did not know that Town of Sunderland had invested $240,000 into the original purchase for the land and, and then the additional 100000 So what we didn't, weren't able, what I learned is that that's a huge step for the senior center when it applies for grants and, and monies. Mm -hmm. And and that shows to the state that there's a commitment by the town that that it's not, not just in the senior housing, but it shows that the town has made a monetary commitment 
towards seniors, which most cities and towns don't do. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, I mean, it's by luck, maybe that we threw the other $100,000 in without knowing this, but I think that $100,000 is actually going to benefit us many times over with, with being able to, uh, and when I, sh I actually went on site, so if anybody wants to see that our site is on, on the web, and I pulled the site down for the consultant, and the first thing that she picked out with the site was a common area. And that, <clears throat> to, to her, was one of the things that many projects lack is a common area. So I would just like, just let you guys know that that's a, a key component. And this person's been involved with senior centers for a long time. When she saw it, her eye lit up like the 4th of July because we had put that component or RDI had included that component. So that's, that was a nice job by you guys. Yeah, I'll have to make sure that there's, if she's seen the website, then it should be pretty easy for them to uh, yeah. kind of look. <clears throat> when we were there in January, um, there was some discussion about shared programming that might happen over at this facility. Absolutely. So um, that's uh, absolutely something that we had planned for. Well, that was good news here. And you're saying that the investment we made is going to help them raise additional funds. Writing grants for additional funds. That's additional how we funds. love to see this. C the CPA fund working here, and it, it's certainly been the case with other things with the with the park. Um, well, we had never talked about that before, yeah. but yeah, all that's of a sudden, right. but by that investing, it's, you're showing the state, and and the state will invest in us for doing that. Right. Nice. Um, well, I have another question, which is like, what are the odds that you're going to be able to get the state funding for the um, development? The, um, Application for um, LIHTX, Low Income Housing Tax Credits, is highly competitive. Um, there are both federal level tax credits as well as state tax credits. Um, I would say that we made the first step by getting a project eligibility letter approval uh, earlier, uh, last, late last fall. And, um, you know, uh, it's going to be a host of things. One, it's going to be putting together the most solid application we can, but also, um, you know, continuing to invite the powers that be that are uh, going to be reviewing these things to come out, look at the site, let them uh, see the demonstration of community support um, so that we can move forward. So, yeah, leverage is, is huge in terms of seeing uh, that this project has legs, if you will. So, so I got a question. It, would it... Would it be better if we had a regional collaboration with a with another town? Would that help? Um, you know, I'll have to uh, get back to you on that. I can't I, I can't say for sure. Um, we already in our application we did talk about um, the uh, preference certainly for Sunderland residents that meet the eligibility income eligibility requirements. But also, we, we did discuss that there were um, surrounding towns, whether it's Waitley, whether it's Deerfield, um, that um, might also have residents that are interested in this. In which case, it might be in our interest to uh, see whether or not either of those towns... Does Waitley have CPC? Mm -hmm. They do. Okay. So it may be in our best interest to talk to them and, about And, and again, because I had talked to some people in government, and they they thought it was a, a unique conversation point. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I talked with a couple of the surrounding towns, you know, informally. We talked informally, and they they were there, there's there's a lot of pressure in our surrounding communities to, to for senior housing, a lot. So maybe it's, it's something you know it, whatever we can do to. To try to strengthen our application, maybe. Yes, Scott. If I could, just to tie into what yeah. Tom was talking about with respect to regional, the project as presented is going to be run, managed by the regional housing authority, and it's important to bear in mind it might be located physically at 120 North Main Street in Sunderland, but it's in no way, shape, or form a Sunderland exclusive project. Right. So it's inherently regional by fair housing rules, 
and run by the Regional Housing Authority. Now, Sunderland, I think, to Tom's point, has gone out and said, this is an important project, and we are committing these resources and the partnering that's gone on. But it's not an exclusive. I think it's really important to kind of make people remember that it's not an exclusive Sunderland housing project. Thank you, Scott. Good point. Yeah, um, so I fully missed the pregame on this, and I'm sorry. I should know this. Are these condos or apartments? Apartments. Yeah, so apartments. those are apartments. And then what is low income? What is that measure? There's there's actually a range of numbers that um, are part of that. Um, the starting point for all of this is something called area median income. And within the affordable housing category, you have very low, which are at 30% of AMI roughly in the $16,200 annual income at this point in time. Um, that's for a family of one. Since most of these are single bedroom units and, and that's the population we assume we're gonna be getting is a lot of single people in these units. Mm -hmm. um, the kind of upper end of affordable goes up to 80% of the area median income, which is in the ballpark right now, these numbers change every year. We're talking about 42, 42,500, 42.5 annually. Okay, and they're all single one bedrooms? No, there are three two bedrooms. There's three two bedrooms, so 30 one bedrooms, three two bedrooms. Correct. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. but, now, but one of the questions that was raised the other day was, about assets. Do you address that up as well? No. Yep. Assets, assets are not part of the equation. So the assets are not part of the equation. Thank you. And I think that's what scares a lot of people. So thank you. And any other questions on the 120 North Main project? So, uh, so, um, ZBA, um, you you all uh, will be presenting um, June seventh. June seventh at the first ZBA. meeting. I imagine it will take maybe a couple or three, depending on the issues that are raised. Yeah. Uh, I'm being optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> it could be how we spend our summer. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, and do you have any more questions for us? Okay. All right. Um, if anybody came in a little bit late, I have a, a handout here that that's sort of shows the status of the um, CPA fund. And there's a sign-in sheet um, if you didn't um, um, sign in just because since it's a public hearing, um, we like to have a public record of who's here. Um, okay. So... Um, Tracy, can you give a sure. talk to us about the playground? Yeah. So we um, applied for CPA funds back in uh, early 2014, January 2014. Um, and we were awarded those funds and went ahead and did roughly a $90,000 remodel um, of the Sunderland Elementary playground. Um, a ton of it was donated. Lots of money came from CPA, um, and a small amount was, you know, private donations. Um, but a ton of labor was donated, right. which really helped us do a lot more than we expected. Um, so I, I spoke with the um, principal last week, and he gave me a letter to share with everybody. I'm not sure if I should read that, or does that help? Is it long? <laughs> <laughs> It's two paragraphs. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, Dear Community Preservation Committee, the renovated Sunderland Elementary School playground has exceeded expectations. All elements, both old and new, are used on an everyday basis. A typical day at the SES playground features high amounts of imaginative play, running, jumping, chasing, twisting, spinning, swinging, and climbing. Additionally, the renovated playground has provided all students with the opportunity to experience success. For students with handicapped needs, the playground's accessibility has proven to be a consistent, positive upgrade. 
Um, over the past few years, we have found that the playground equipment is primarily used by students in grades K through 4, as the older students tend to engage more in team-oriented sports and games. From wear and tear standpoint, we have had no maintenance issues. However, in the near future, we may need to apply fresh playground mulch in the areas that see the highest impact. Positive student testimonials. Quote, I like it because it has different options every time we go outside, from Sadie in third grade. <laughs> and then, I like it because you can climb on a lot of things and you can never get bored. And that's from Briar in third grade. In closing, the CPA funds that were used for this project will continue to benefit the students of the Sunderland Elementary School for years to come. As the principal of Sunderland Elementary School, I can easily speak for the entire staff in saying that we feel privileged to help students grow in all facets of their lives. Playground allows for both free and structured play, and it represents one avenue we use to help shape these beautiful young children. With much gratitude, Ben Barshevsky. Um, so I just wanted to say that we can't track how many miles have been, you know, like a, if we had mileage on this, it would, I think it'd be pretty impressive. Um, and smiles, you know, I think that there's a lot going on there that's, you know, we just can't qualify in the number that's happening that's really positive. And with this epidemic of screens, I just want to say that these outdoor spaces that, you know, this group of people <coughs> is, you know, funding really supports, I think is so much more critical than we realize. Um, but on weekends, the playground is full of, of families that come to town from out of town and stop at the Frosty and hit the Millstone and go to the Maze. And um, it's, it is nothing but good news over there with that playground. I mean, it's just, I mean, there's just nothing but good news. And I'm just really proud of that for all of us. And I'm really grateful that we were able to put that through. Um, so thank you. I think a giant thank you to all of you. This is the most important thing to say tonight. Thank you, Tracy. And um, I want to, um, and it, we're a little, this is a little belated because <laughs> um, it was several years ago, but um, we never, you know, we're still developing as a program and a committee, and we never really had put a reporting process in place. So um, this is a little belated, but, um, you know, I learned a lot from watching you, and <laughs> I'm sure you guys learned a lot, but, 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 and if anybody wasn't witnessing it, they killed themselves. I mean, I think you lost an entire summer over that project. I mean, you worked yeah, so, so crazy, hard. I mean, like, I don't even remember that, okay. to be honest with you. Like, it, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it, the, the payback was just... Yeah. I mean, when you walk from that playground on that back trail by Rock's house, uh -huh. I mean, like, that whole, like, it's like a bird sanctuary back there, the view of the mountain with the church. I mean, like, it is just a stunning setting mm -hmm. and it's it's like right here you know it's we're very grateful so i don't even remember yeah okay <laughs> but anyway <Don't> like <laughs> <laughs> he's pro well, i just you know i just learned and i learned from the projects i've been working on and from watching you and other people that these um cpa projects i mean it's it's great when you uh you know get the money but there's a lot of work involved. I mean, it's a huge commitment to take on a project, and none of these would happen without a champion. I mean, that's the sort of number one key ingredient for any project, you know, and you were an incredible champion of Thank that you. project. Thanks. Yeah. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, <laughs> Trace, do you have any money left in that account? We didn't use it all. Yeah. And I think it just went back. I think I well, think it, there was ten thousand so, dollars. So why don't you why don't you use it for upkeep of the of Right, the, there's there's a balance of ten thousand and ninety four dollars um in that account. We haven't ever voted to close it. Right. Um, I'd love to get the mulch. It's special mulch, you uh -huh. know, it's like a certain playground mulch, so uh, I would love to report back about that if that's all right with everybody. Do you know how much that they need for that? I can go back to my spreadsheet okay. and find out how much that was because it would not be the same amount. It would just, you know, it would maybe be, you know, a quarter of that price is yeah. what it would end up being. 
Um, so yeah, I can check on that. I'd be happy to. But if you wanted ideas about new products, <laughs> um, you know, there was a sort of, there was more that we didn't do back there, if that's what you're saying, to get spent. I, I am, because I'm, I, in, 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 Sarah, in Sarah's point is well taken, um, the volunteer effort that went into that, I mean, if there was prices for a, a lot of services were donated, um, that were probably figured into your original uh, into your original part price and and I would say and, and I think the CPA is all about um, using CPA money as seed money to get to get a project to get a project to fruition and and I would say that if you were able to use got all this donated time and effort I would say I would I, I would think I would recommend I would think that you should spend that that money to complete what you guys were going to, if you still want to do it, but yeah. to complete the project that you wanted to do, I think, right? Yeah, I mean, we, um, we haven't, I think that you had an original budget, mm -hmm. and so we, I think the way, in my understanding of how we've worked is, it's, if it's, if it's if within the bounds of the intention of the project, I mean, the, the the budgets do need to be somewhat flexible because you just can't anticipate things. And you, well, you can't. You, I don't think you can. You can't. You can't. We try projects try to put a value on 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 uh, volunteerism, but we can't. Okay. I, and and I I and I, I think everybody in this room knows that. I mean. You know everything from how, how much did we save when we moved the library, Lauren? When when we got the town together to move the library, I mean, I mean that was a weekend, and and we had hundreds of people. I think probably, you know, even if they gave an hour, you can't, you never, you can't charge for those times. I mean, we, like that. So, I I would say that the town voted that we were we were presented a, a number of ninety five thousand to create a playground. And I, I don't know. I, I guess it's not done yet. I'll check into it because, okay. I mean, I'll check into it. Yeah. Well, so, like, the mall, I mean, you knew you were going to have, in the, in, the, in the Rock Warner business, you call it fluff. You know, when you, get, when you, when you take 10 yards of material out, you have to order 12 yards to put it back because that's, what it, that's how much it compacts down. So... I would say that you knew you're going to have to re, re, restore the the mulch. That's a that's a no brainer. It, or or if there's you got paint, you know you got to paint. You got to you know some of the the older equipment that still needed to be touched up. I mean, all those things are. Yeah, and we're not um, maintenance is not different. supposed to be funded by CPA funds. It's, it's not within the. But um, uh, the materials, like the mulch, would be a material that's needed for that that fits within the original intent of the of the grant. So I, um, do you want to make a motion to keep the that that sure. account I have open? To ask Tracy, yeah, motion uh, to have Tracy uh, look into what what they can do and to finish the project. Sure. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thanks Thank for coming you. tonight, Tracy. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> How often do you go home from here with a present? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else about the playground? Any questions or anything? Okay. Um, how about the cemetery project? Scott, you are well versed. <laughs> you are down there every day. I, I'm, Running around in my I'm just down the the playgrounds in the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of running around enthusiasm at the cemetery. <laughs> Thank the body. <laughs> Mainly by quadrupeds. There's a lot more going on down there than would be the eye. It's it's arguably it's, it's arguably one of the it's arguably one of the more interesting and busy places. So in 2016, the cemetery trustees came with a, a three-year program to um, document, create a master plan for the cemetery, including in that master plan, uh, stone landscape, meaning so monument 
survey, monument um, repair and long-term maintenance plan, uh, canopy survey, a river bank survey for the vegetation, and then um, all of those elements coming together and having what does a cemetery look like <coughs> in another 100 years. In the interim since that application, and the application for the CPA funds was for $52,000, and I think that's what's here yeah. on your sheet, yeah. $52,000. Our, the elements of that plan supported by CPA was uh, architectural planning, um, new tree purchase and installation. We felt that CPA might <coughs> be uh, a town funded, it would be best served to have something with a bit of legacy, not just files and binders and so tree purchases. And then lastly, some uh, interior road uh, work. And that interior road work and those tree uh, purchase and installation are predicated on the landscape architect and the stone archivist's review of the facility. So those three items were the categories. Also in that master plan, uh, our, our master budget for this phase of the cemetery was for the cemetery trust fund uh, to take care of arborists' uh, three-year major maintenance because we had some we have some we have a mature canopy down there and there are some significant um, hurdles to working in a mature canopy in in a cemetery that was uh, incorporated in 1718. So that said. Uh, the other piece was the replacement of the actual uh, maintenance shed that's down there. That was another piece. There was a town appropriation uh, for the cemetery roads, which was about $28,000, again, contingent on what kind of roads look like. Another value to having a landscape architect and a preservationist come in and look at that space is, do you need all of those roads? Do you need all that interior space? One area of particular interest that the trustees have is in that interior space, it's important to mind, bear in mind, we're bordered on the west by the river and ringed on the south, east, and north by APR. So the footprint that the cemetery has is the footprint the cemetery will always have. It's not going to get any bigger. That said, the trustees reached out to a uh, number of landscape architects, one rose to the uh, to the top because of uh, her work in just this area, in New Haven, in New York, in Boston, in Amherst, uh, and we've contracted uh, with uh, Martha Lyons out of uh, Northampton, Mass. And I see people nodding. People have worked with Martha in the past. She also works with a uh, stone a preservationist, and their scope of work is just that. It's the mapping of the cemetery using our historical documents, using some new tech, getting names to places where names haven't been for some time, understanding the, the wide range of our, our monument inventory and what it takes to keep those up on an annualized basis. Remember, part of this is planning and then to repair some that have, um, you know, need repair. That culminates with recommendations and a final preservation plan, which we expect to be complete here in early October, October of 2018. That's the, the, the architect's the architect. plan? Yeah. Okay. So be a couple of meetings with the, land, with the trustees, uh, some detailed survey work that's gotta happen, a lot of archive work that's got to happen. So that's the piece that the CPA, uh, we have not expended any funds from the CPA mm -hmm. allocation. We expect to fully expend those funds this calendar year, which would be, split. well, this calendar year is going to turn into budget year 1890. Okay. The tree planting is not the season currently. That's important to bear in mind. And we want to have some input as to what that canopy looks like, the projected canopy looks like. In the interim, because this is a multi-pronged uh, piece, there's pieces that are CPA, pieces that are cemetery trust, pieces that are 
donation and pieces that are town appropriation, the trustees have spent, and people who have spent time in the cemetery last fall probably saw cranes down there removing, really uh, sadly removing, nearly 100 foot uh, spruce trees that got attacked by Willie Adelger and they had to be craned out of that space. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, this spring, uh, that, that, that to the tune of um, about $9,000, this spring our, our current arborist is going to uh, get after the large oak trees. We just got those uh, proposals and again this is a cemetery trustees appropriation. In our plan we had $18,000 budgeted. Uh, we're going to exceed that value but that's, that's, that's our issue. Uh, those large oak trees are going to require about 11 working days and that all of that work because of the height of the trees and the size of the uh, limbs that are required to be dealt with are all going to be done by climbers and ropes. There will be no cranes involved in that because of their proximity to the stones. It's, it's delicate but brutal work. So that's happening. Expect to see that here before and expect uh, July for that to be completed. And then our stonework, we have spent in the last, in the interim or three year uh, window for this three year plan, the trustees have spent uh, $7,000 on monument repair. And in that $7,000, that it is, that precedes the, the plan that the preservationists are expected to develop as part of this agreement with the uh, landscape architect and her, her, her preservationist. What I'm excited about is uh, the preservationist has a long uh, history in New England, and I'm kind of excited to see that some of the styles of the particular engraving that's down there, in particular in the 1730s through the 18 aughts, 1820s, they, can all, they almost have a signature. You know who did it. And, and apparently this guy who works with folks at the Grove Street, the Grove Street Cemetery in New Haven uh, can, can almost put names to who the carvers were, not just the interned. So that's, it could be really interesting. I'm really kind of excited about that. So uh, Martha Lyons uh, and uh, her archivist uh, start, have, have got their contract. They started some of the document work. We expect them to be on site uh, and then complete through October. So. The interior roads part, if I could talk about the project. We're not entirely sure because of the nature of burial from 1722 when Elizabeth Graves was put down there to yesterday or last week when the last one was put down there. The arc of the style of burial has changed dramatically. You know, effectively it used to be pretty darn green, right? Back in the day, there wasn't a lot of cement involved with internment. In the last two years, the majority of internments nationally have gone to cremation. So our, our land mass for a uh, family of four uh, was current, or is currently uh, 12 feet by 15 feet. That's not always fully used. In the current environment with a green burial request and cremations, we may have more available property that's down there that includes some of those interior roads. Maybe we don't need those interior roads. Maybe those interior roads could be torn right up and, and made available for walking internments, i.e. cremations. But we're really excited about the, the vantage point that uh, Martha and her, and her, and her preservationists are, are bringing to this. So that's our current update. We haven't spent money from CPA. You can expect some invoices. I think that the trust, the trustees were, by town meeting vote, uh, were the distributors of those funds. We've expended uh, funds ourselves uh, to date, the trustees have, out of the uh, expendable trust. And we expect that the total accumulation of the project when it's done after our trees are purchased and planted, again, this was a $52,000 CPA request for a three-year plan with a grand total of $129,000. And that's a combination of appropriation, trustees, CPA, and some private donations. So that's kind of where we're at. We're still fighting the good fight with invasive species. And you know, I, want to, I want to talk to those 
nice fellows from Fish and Game who came down and did yeah. battle with knotweed over here. Yep. Um, but again, that's that's nothing we'll be dealing with the CPA on. Good. Would there be any kind of public um, yep. presentation of Martha's work? Yep. It sounds really interesting. Yep. There's actually uh, two pieces uh, that are before uh, the draft preservation plan is complete, are two public uh, presentations. What we found, what you've got, what we think we can do. So it's not going to be exclusive to the trustees. Excellent. Um, any other questions about the cemetery project? No, the only thing I'll say is the big challenge has been, we used to use Shumway out of Amherst, and our big challenge has been being able to try to find somebody to fill their shoes. For? For Arborist. And uh, we've had some drop and, chop and drop people, um, which is okay in certain situations, but real Arborists are few and far between, especially with a canopy and having the equipment necessary to get in there without doing damage. But we had someone who had equipment, and he was he was... Knowledgeable, but he did not have adequate equipment, and unfortunately, that caused some damage by him just trying to reach stuff. So, we're trying someone from town, and we'll see whether they. Um, it sounds good, but we'll see. So that's definitely been a, a problem. So if, if anybody is interested, and I'm sure everybody at that table has been to the cemetery at least more than once. Uh, if you're down there in the next little bit, take a walk around and look at the, the canopy that happens to be supported by uh, five really large oaks. And to get up inside those, to do maintenance trimming of two inches and greater, two inches and greater of dead stuff. Because we, it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a combination of aesthetic and it's a defensive position. When you've got a, the velocity of a limb at two to six inches, coming down from 80 to 100 feet, and it has only uh, historic stones to hit, they lose. Right. So we spend a lot of effort and energy. You'll always see trustees walking around like this. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk around with your head up. Tomorrow. Right, exactly. So. So that's 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 our that's our current status uh, with respect. I expect that this again calendar year, which is combined budget year, uh, these funds will be extended. These funds will be extended in their full. Okay. All right. Any other questions on cemetery? Lots for sale every day. <laughs> right. We'll be there tomorrow. Night. Okay, um, Bob. You want to talk about the sure. fire truck? Where the fire truck's at? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we're getting close to the end, um, our hope all along was to have it here for the 300th anniversary, and we're trying to light a fire under this guy to finish it off, and it's going to be a race to the end. Huh. <laughs> may or may not make it back for June, <laughs> but um, we've expended uh, just about all of our CPA funds other than $1,500 or $2,000. Uh, the yeah. Firearms Association has spent probably another ten to $15,000. Uh, we've been up there three times. Jim Loomis won a couple other times. Um, you know, the shop is amazing. The restoration work this guy does on different pieces of equipment is amazing. You're going to be very happy with the results when it gets back. For the 350? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> oh, come on. You've got to give us a shot. you got to give us that shot, Bobby. <laughs> I know how hard you're trying. <laughs> um, so are you, will you be using, do you need to keep that account open? or? For, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, all right. Does anybody have any questions about the fire truck? I think you get mad at me. <laughs> We've had donations from individuals and businesses, and we appreciate all that. And Wonderful. <laughs> have you gotten, gotten a chance to see it in progress? Or? Yep. And the work he's done so far is great. So we know the body is out getting uh, the final decals put on it, so he just needs to get those parts back to reassemble them, and then we'll go get it. They didn't break it down to like an IKEA box to ship out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you.
No, thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. Could I ask, Madam yeah. Chair, is, sure. is, is, there, is there a motion to keep open the Riverside Cemetery? We don't need to. I, I don't think we need to make them. I think, uh, yeah. So. I, I, heard, I heard two, and I didn't want to leave the meeting and having this some formality. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, um, I think in the case of the playground, just because it was, it, you know, it's a older thing, but I, I don't think. So I'll make sure it doesn't get closed. Out. The only, the only way, the guardian of the guardian. The only way it'll get closed is if we vote to close it out. So, um, you know. But I think just in the case of playground. And typically, it would be at the request of the project manager. We expect to be back at the next year's meeting saying, "Hey, this is everything that happened. Thanks very much." Okay. Um, okay. So um, the library. Backyard project, yeah. So we've, um, we've completed the first phase of the library backyard project, which um, you may not be able to really tell, but a lot has happened. Oh. Um, so <laughs> mostly that includes work on the um, the American elm tree to preserve it. Um, there's cables up in holding up the branches. Oh. They've lifted them quite high. I can't see any more with my glasses on, but I promise you they're there. I rushed to put them in. <laughs> you get really close or get better eyesight than me. You can probably see them up there, but they're very subtle, which I, I appreciate. Hmm. Um, we've also done the, the root trimming, um, which was needed um, <coughs> to make way for the landscaping work that we plan to do back there. Hmm. Um, we also have done electrical work both inside and outside um, to run electricity out through the backyard area, which is um, um, mostly going to be um, for the lighting that we have out there, but also for um, we're going to be doing outdoor movies back there um, mm -hmm. and other other projects that may require electricity. Um, so in terms of um, CPA funding, we, what we have spent is um, about half of the funds um, mm -hmm. for preservation of the tree and then also installing the lights in the backyard. I turned the lights on, but I, I don't think you'll be able to see too much, but I'll leave them on overnight so you guys can maybe on your way out see oh, what okay. we've done. We've got lighting, up lighting the American elm tree to oh. really highlight um, its beauty, and then also kind of some stage lighting around the, the what we call it the stage area, but it's the, the concrete pathway um, in front of the building where we host concerts and, and um, other events there. Um, our, um, we've also, um, using library funds, we've done in, internal electrical work to kind of support the electricity there, but we've also purchased the equipment to do the out outdoor movies, so we're very excited to oh. add, that, um, add that service to our, our program lineup for the summers. And we hope that our first one is going to be in July, our second one will be in August this year. Um, and then the, the next steps, um, we um, have, we originally um, reserved 7,500 of the funding in order to add a, a concrete pad um, out there, which would create additional accessible space as well as multi-purpose space for a variety of programs. Um, so when we're not having programs, people could, you know, take chairs and sit out there, use their laptops, what, what have you, enjoy, you know, read out in sunshine. Um, but um, during library events, it would be another wheelchair accessible space. It would also provide space for dancing, should people enjoy that. Or we have a lot of people who um, practice Qigong and Tai Chi and meditation. Um, so it could also create a flat surface for that, those kinds of activities. I also host a lot of children's programs out there, craft programs that are kind of messy. So it'd be nice to have extra flat space for those as well, to make it a little bit safer for folks. I don't have tables wobbling everywhere. Um, however, um, we've kind of, our designer had been doing this as a, um, you know, as a service for us. We had not been paying our designer. And our designer has had to back off for, um, to work on other priorities. Um, so the trustees right now are investigating um, bringing in a new designer. Um, only because we aren't certain if the concrete pad where we had um, envisioned it originally is going to be the best best purpose for it to suit our needs. Um, so we're, our plan this summer is to bring in a designer to give us a couple of options for do we want to use concrete or maybe perhaps wood or some other flat surface might be better. Um, and is that location and size going to serve um, the original intention of the grant that you guys awarded us. Um, so that's where we are right now is um, you know, just working on, on phase two to just make sure that um, that money is spent in, for the best use of, you know, to truly enhance the library backyard. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and that that's the last piece of inter, in, that was in terms of what we funded? Yes. Um, so you had funded um, 7500 was for that, um, okay. that additional flat space, but also there's a little bit of extra fun funding there for landscaping. Okay. We don't, it's kind of on a hill. We don't want it to be like a drop off. Right, <laughs> so. right. 
that that would be some of it as well. Okay. All right. So um, so we'll be keeping that one open as well. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Does anybody have any questions about the library backyard project? We know that we have to move that tree. We've forgotten. A little tree. Yes. <laughs> um, anybody have any? When's the first concert? Um, the first, well, we are not doing a June concert because the Friends are sponsoring one of the bands for the, the um, parade concert. So on the 16th, we're sponsoring one of those ones. So go to that one. Okay. Um, our first concert is going to be July 13th. We're having Steve D'Agostino's Big Band, so the Ken Franks and After Style Big okay. Band. Um, and then we are looking into having a, a second one in August. We just have not settled on the band yet. We're still working on that. Great. Good point. If I may, if, if you could go to a different, <coughs> a different surface besides concrete, it may. I think concrete when it's new is fine, um, but as it as it ages, if it's not cared for, um, so things. So I mean, you know, pavers or uh, something that it may long longer term may give you a better better surface. Yeah, we, we were also thinking of Ipe wood um, or other yeah. other things. So hopefully a designer can give us the input for what's going to last the longest, what will be the best investment, and what will, will suit um, the original dimension. Yeah, I, I know concrete squares, after, after three years, they look like concrete squares. Yeah. <laughs> the original idea was to have them um, printed with elm leaves, like the American elm leaves. So it wouldn't have just been yeah. just plain old gray concrete. but. Um, we most likely will move to a different material. I think the area that we call the stage has an inset that's aggregate, mm -hmm. and I think that kind of has aged a little better. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's just, I, I don't know, when I think of the concrete, I see, I see you know, somebody pours it, they don't, they don't, they really don't do it correctly, yeah. it starts to swell, and then, you know, then how do you, you know, keep maintaining the, you know, patching it, and I, I don't know, it, but you're right, if you do it, it could be done differently. But I, I don't. Know. Well, you, you. I mean, you see it. So. Yeah. Any other questions on library? Thank you, Catherine. Jennifer, how's your brain? Do you, can you speak a little bit about the, the open space <laughs> APR? Jennifer's in the middle of a. Did you close? Mid move. Yeah. Did mid move. She closed on a new house today. Congratulations. Did you? Did yeah. it? Did you close? Close today. Yes. Congratulations. So, yes. Never moving she's again. Moving she's moving closer to yeah. me. Yeah. We've been watching. When that house goes on the market, that's what we want there. <laughs> we just moving to the other side of the triangle on Garage Road, but on North Silver Lane now. Yeah. <laughs> on the uphill side. <laughs> With the dry basement, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's well a, there's a, it's a real highlight. <laughs> the dry basement. <laughs> you told Jennifer there used to be 13 children that lived in that. <laughs> and she couldn't believe it. <laughs> so... Yeah. Um, yeah, we had in the first year of CPA, we we um, granted thirty thousand dollars for a conservation trust for APR. That still has not been used, correct? Right. Uh, can you speak a little? And we've been every year we've been putting aside t um, the ten percent required ten percent for open space. Right. But as far as I know, we well we've used the, we use a little bit of open space for the park project and for this the the new playground study design, right? But other than that, we haven't used any open space funds right. yet. Yeah, uh, initially open, the open space was only designed for land preservation, APR, forest preservation, and it was only a couple of years ago that they allowed it to be for recreational uses that are open space in nature, like the park and playgrounds. So that's part of it. But yeah. um, that initial 30,000 was intended for a specific APR purchase but then the scenic byway was able to provide the town match instead. Was that for the Brown and Regan? Yes. Yes. Right. So now it's there when there's another large parcel that's good for APR, then it'll, it'll be there for the town match. That's always required, which has gone up in the years. So. And there's no more scenic byway money for that town match. So it will be needing the our own town patch to really kick in. But, but that was another good example of working, of, of, we actually worked with the town of Hadley to make that happen. To, so the Franklin actually, Land Trust. So we, so we really it, uh, compounded our, 
our money on that project as well because Hadley came in and that's when Hadley came in, that's when the scenic byway money became available to us. So that was a good one. That was a real good one. So do, do you yeah. on um, um, CONCOM, do you see any, any potential properties coming up? I mean, there, we've, we've almost locked up all APR, haven't we? Mm, no. No. Depends on who you ask, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, do you guys have your eyes on any, any? It's hard to be pro, too proactive because it's all private properties and it depends on when private property owners are ready to make a change. Mm -hmm. so. and, and we just, we just, the town, there. The, t the town, a very important piece just became available in the last year also that we worked on, right? The, the place down off from uh, 116, that there was kind of like the missing, the missing. Oh, item. yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that was the last piece of the scenic park. Right. I think. But that, but that, that, that was that was a very important piece in that. And there was a puzzle that they had worked a long time on, and that was kind of that when that the owner finally came to us. It took a long a long time for that to happen, but when the owner did, it kind of filled that that puzzle that area together. Was a, that was a very that was a very good purchase. But we didn't need CPA funds for that. That was covered by yeah. Something else. Okay. Yeah. But you don't, but in the future, if there's any more piano pieces that are in between other APR land so it can connect and keep it continuous APR land through. Yeah. The, state's, the, state's looking for, the state's looking for the town to have a 10% investment now mm -hmm. on, on when they're looking at buying uh, APR land or protecting land, they're looking for the town to contribute 10%. Right. They can give you certain credits if you have the farm. The ag right to farm bylaw and an ag commission and different things can help you get some credit toward that 10% requirement. But and right now, from putting away our the 10% that we're uh, we're required to use 10% of the CPA funds for open space, and we've been putting it aside every year. And now we have like a hundred thousand dollars roughly balance, right? Yeah, That's, open space reserve. It's not in my head. So. It's a hundred thousand. <laughs> Plus the thirty thousand that we yep. decide for April. So that's okay. it. But that that so that's ready when an opportunity arises. Yeah, it's a piece of land somewhere. The only thing um. is, um, I, I um, it takes it can take a year to get the CPA funds for a project. Do we, is there any? Well, that's why you work to, with land trusts. Huh? That's why you work with land trusts. I mean, if it's a fire sale and somebody wants to have something happen quickly, it's Franklin County, you know, there's Franklin Land Trust, there's um, Mount Grace, there's right. a number of them, and um, Kestrel, and, you know, they'll come in and stop gap. Okay. Um, Until that's we what, can. That's really what my, they're, they kind of are fiduciary and they come through. And, yeah. But that's why it's important to have that 30000 because that money, that money's already been designated for that purpose, so... And Michael's right. You could with, with uh, Mount Grace or Kestrel or one of those land land groups, but also the thirty thousand. It helps us being able to step in quickly. Also, that you don't have to. So it's it's nice to have that thirty thousand. Yeah, I mean, obviously it depends on the size of the project, but yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're in, we're in okay shape with that. Okay. Yeah. Sure. All right. Thank you. Sure. Any questions about open space or APR? Um, Scott, I was wondering, we have um, an, um, an open account for the housing committee that hasn't been spent, was for housing feasibility, um, uh, $9,000. Um, could, could, can you speak to sure. whether that should... The housing committee uh, worked with the Franklin Regional Council of Governments two years ago to update our housing plan. And that was uh, done through a grant round, so we did not need the $9,000 from CPA, which was very helpful. Mm -hmm. That was submitted and accepted by DHCD. One of, one of the nice pieces about the 120 North Main is it happened to fit right in housing generation plan. Mm -hmm. So the $9,000 feasibility study could be used in the next coming years, or one or two years, on a specific piece that comes up. The housing committee is, is uh, rejuvenated and becoming more active over the course of the summer. 
most of the housing committee's work was focused on, as, as, as you know, was focused on uh, generating that very first housing plan that got accepted. Then we got involved with um, large scale development and its impact. And now we have to focus on kind of the onesie twosies of affordable housing. And I think that is probably where that, that money, my feeling is that's probably where those, those funds from CPA could, could really be quite helpful. Right. Yeah, um, as I recall, because I, um, I was on the housing committee when we did that, at the time we were trying to get a Habitat for Humanity right. project in town, and Habitat for Humanity would love to come to Sunderland. Um, uh, and um, the, the problem we had was that we didn't have a piece of land that... It's quite was, interesting as we talk about APR, if we could, Madam Chair, we talk about the APR pieces or even the project at 120 North Main or uh, the the pathway is work out here. The town of Sunland does not have a lot of options with respect to an open space or a greenfield site to turn over for an either owner occupied or <coughs> first time home buyer or et cetera. We are, we're weighted heavily on the rental side of the fence, obviously, and we're a little bit land deficient when it comes to town properties. So that's a it's a fascinating kind of conundrum for the town of Sunland all of our open spaces to be involved in, unless you're on the housing committee. And the question is, well, how does that work? Market rate versus fixed, you know, counted properties on the DHCB rule versus programs that support people through affordable housing. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting tension. Right. Right. Um, so, so do you see, do you, do you see, do you want to keep that? I think it would have, it would be helpful to keep that open for at least this this year this review period to understand inside of the housing generation plan even if two large project 120 North and then Sugarbush Meadows actually ever gets constructed even though they add to our total housing stock the reality is we go from 0.7 percent to nearly 9.7 percent just below the 10 percent threshold that doesn't really negate that doesn't really offset the need to explore the other categories of affordable housing. And that's really important to bear in mind. So I, I'd, I'd implore the body to keep that open. Okay. Yeah, and also if if there were some place to come up that um, Habitat could work with, and I, you know, there are a couple of properties, there's that one on um, North Main yep. that is just sitting there would be a, a sure. perfect. Um, the place. housing authority actually is a part of that, but yeah. We, we talked about some land swap. Anyway, there's some active discussion about that. Okay. Good. Yeah. So, um, if have if we if we had a property mm -hmm. that Habitat could work with, we would have to have funds mm -hmm. to you know do some of the feasibility Correct. work. So, um, and I'd love to see I'd love to see Habitat. Yeah. Whether it's Habitat, there's a fair amount of veterans agencies that are doing this okay. kind of work as well. Okay. There's, there's there's quite a quite a few, quite a few um, in the mix these days. Okay. All right, so, um, okay. Any questions about that, the housing? Okay, thank you. Um, and then I guess, uh, um, I just, I think I asked Wendy to come to talk about historic records preservation, but she didn't make it. Um, do you know anything about that? Yeah. Well, Sherry said it, it went great. <laughs> she said it went great, and uh, um, they have all the records archived, and um, it's very helpful. Um, so, but um, we can get more of a report later on that. Um, and then as far as the um, Pathways Committee goes, I can report on that, on the, the park, um, that um, um, we're moving along at a very fast clip. Um, the park grant that we got, um, it seems when you're, you're first applying for it that it's this long period, you know, it's a two-year grant and you have a whole year for design and then, you know, a whole year for construction. But, wow, the first of all, they, we didn't even get the, the first half of the first year. They didn't notify us till January and, like, we have to have our construction bid document done next week. Um, so it's, we've been working really hard <laughs> and, and Carlos, you know, um, has, you know, been working 
like crazy, but um, but we're in good shape at this point. We got through all of the environmental um, regulation um, um, hurdles, um, and there, there's going to be one last meeting next Tuesday. But but basically, we've we've got um, all the environmental regulations, and we're just waiting to hear from Mass Historical on whether we have to do a dig um, <laughs> before we um, do the construction. But um, but it's moving along. We're working on the design for our signage and um, and uh, um, and I guess I'll just say that um, I, the you know we, we the pathways committee got three CPA grants and it was I think a really good example of um, how CPA can seed a project and really help something grow um, and bring in. Um, um, bigger funds from um, other sources because we started with a ten thousand dollar grant for conceptual studies, and that helped us get off the ground. And then um, we were then able to get um, because we we got off the ground and we got a plan in place. Um, then we were able to attract the state to do the boat ramp. We were able to pull in U.S. Fish and Wildlife to work on the invasives. Um, and um, then we were able to get this $200,000 state grant. Um, so it was, it's a really good example of, of using CPA's seed money and leverage to um, build a program. Um, and um, I did learn, like, you, you know, I, I never dreamed it would, everything would take as long as it does. But, um, um, and also, Another thing I learned is that you have to talk to a lot of people. You just have to talk to as many people <laughs> as you possibly can. Yeah, and that's and so it takes time and talking, and um, but um, but you really can leverage these funds to, you know, build something significant and successful. So, are there any questions about the the Riverside Park project? Yeah, I had a question about it, Sarah. Um, so the the little trail that could connect the current design now yeah. up to North Main Street, how what what's the status on the idea of that? So making it like a full loop. Um, yeah, um, we we um, we had a dream. <laughs> <laughs> I had a dream, um, and it, the dream is not dead. The dream is still alive and rock. Uh, put a lot of work into it as well, but the dream was to connect to the buttonball tree, um, you know, to make a big loop to North Main. Um, but we um, um, we ran into kind of lack of land. <laughs> it basically needed to try to get a landowner to sell land um, for the path to exist on, and right now no landowner. Uh, wants the path running through their backyard. Well, actually, that's, that's yeah. not quite true. Yeah. The one fronting south uh, North Main Street was Willie. The one behind that landowner and the town had an enthusiastic price in mind. <laughs> well, and, and, well and, and I, I think that maybe he really didn't mean to sell, but. <laughs> Enthusiastic yeah. price. That's put well, Rock. Enthusiastic. Yeah, good will. Yeah, good will. Right I like that. Yeah. Yeah, actually, the property that the button ball is on <laughs> is willing to work with us, um, and but it's because of zoning bylaws. It 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 a, a complicated land swap has to be involved, um, and we worked on it a lot, and just not have not yet been able to pull it off. Um, yeah. Any other questions on that? No, thank you. Oh, sure. Can um, I make a motion to close the public hearing? Okay, sure. And second? Sure, Tom, second? go for it. <laughs> well, then we second. Can, then we can second. our meeting. Second, we can. Okay, and are there any other, any other questions, concerns? Any lessons learned? It takes time. You said it. Yes. <laughs> and a champion. That's right. And a champion. Well, thank you for all you do. Okay, thank nice. you for coming, everyone.